case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. One person is dead following a shooting just north of downtown. More details coming up. Plus, at the Supreme Court, as President Donald Trump and 18 Republican-led states will ask the justices to eliminate the Affordable Care Act in its entirety. Outside with live cam, we barely dipped below 70 degrees in the overnight hours. Look at those low clouds kind of obscuring the downtown skyline. Justin is in for Mike all morning, and he'll have some details coming up. Hey, good morning. It's November 10th. It is Tuesday. Glad you made it to Tuesday. And it's downright warm and muggy out there this morning. It is for the most part. Although when I stepped out, I felt like one slight breeze and I was like, oh, this is great. And I failed oh, to tell you in the newsroom before the newscast, uh -huh. actually uh, half my commute to downtown saw sprinkles on the windshield. Yeah, there were some sprinkles. Yeah, yeah. a little bit of drizzle. It, it's too bad that it doesn't actually add up to like actual rain, yeah. uh, but it is nice to see. We're gonna have a little bit of that this morning, some fog too. Let's take a look at some of the headlines for today. And uh, we're gonna see a humid, warmer than average morning. Now by midday, cold front starts to work in. This could help to create a shower or two, still not significant rain. And then by this afternoon clearing, we'll get some drier air in here and it'll feel a little bit better, especially as we go into tomorrow morning. Temperatures will be quite a bit cooler. Right now we're at 69 degrees, so it is uh, warm and muggy for sure. 66 Uvalde, 68 in Del Rio, 72 still right now in Catua. And we do have some visibility issues, not here in San Antonio, but as you go down to the south in these places like Gonzales, Victoria, that's where visibility is down to about a quarter of a mile. And we do have a dense fog advisory in effect for those areas. So basically south and east of San Antonio, it's possible we could see a little bit of fog here, but I think uh, it probably stays relegated down there closer to the coast. Forecast for today, 10% chance of a shower around noon with that frontal boundary. This front does not cool us down, but it does dry us out some. Dew points will come down this afternoon. High temperature right around 80 degrees. Let's check in on the traffic this morning. Go over to Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Well, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone at home as we take a look at the roadways. First, word of caution, right now, no accidents uh, that will slow you down the highways. However, as uh, Mark and Justin were discussing, that mist is out there, so make sure you give it some extra time. Reduce that speed, increase that fountain distance, and please put away those distractions. 410 Austin Highway, so far, no problems there. We move over to some other areas like 410 at Frontage Road Road. Traffic's still light, but still very early this morning. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. Not one or two, but three shootings over the past few hours have kept San Antonio police very busy. Our Sarah Costa joins us now with the latest on those three separate incidents. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. The most recent shooting happened around 10 o'clock last night on the city's west side. SAPD says a man was driving in the area of Southwest Loop 410 near Frio City Road when someone in another vehicle started shooting at him. Police say the bullet ricocheted around the inside of the car and grazed the driver's shoulder. He was not seriously injured, though, and police are still looking for the shooter this morning. Next, San Antonio police are looking into two different scenes involving a shooting on the southwest side. Officers say around 9 o'clock last night, a 17-year-old boy was found shot and taken to the hospital. This is in the 7200 block of Horizon Star, but police say he was shot somewhere else. Officers say the teen was playing basketball at a court nearby when he was shot in the leg. Someone then took that teen to the second location. Police are now looking for a dark four-door sedan that may be involved in this shooting case. Finally, another shooting just north of downtown turned deadly last night. This one happened on North Main Avenue, just behind Lulu's Bakery before 7 p.m. Police say a man in his 20s was found dead with a gunshot to the head and shell casings were found around his body. Officers have not been able to locate the gun, but they are looking at surveillance video to try to learn more. It's unclear if the man was staying at the motel nearby or if he was homeless. These are just three of the five shootings that happened in San Antonio since 5 p.m. yesterday. You can read the latest about those others on KSAT.com. Mark. Sarah, thank you. One person was killed last night during a crash on the city's east side. San Antonio police responded to the wreck around 6 p.m. near Loop 410 and Sinclair Road. The person that was killed has only been described by the medical examiner's office as a 43-year-old male. Details of how the crash happened have not yet been released. Supreme Court takes up a case today affecting millions of Americans' health care. It all comes as a new coronavirus vaccine and antibody treatment show some promise. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. 
This morning, Obamacare is hanging in the balance as coronavirus cases surge across the country. The Supreme Court today will hear arguments on the Affordable Care Act from the Trump administration, asking the justices to invalidate the entire law. It's done me a lot of good, and and honestly, I wouldn't have known where to turn um, or where to sign up for insurance. 21 million Americans will lose health insurance nationwide if the law is struck down. And protections for 54 million people with pre-existing conditions could also be eliminated. Veronica Valdez, a mother of five, is watching the case closely after enrolling in Obamacare when she lost her job. Having kids also, I mean, you can't take the risk of not having insurance. The court upheld the Affordable Care Act in two previous cases. But now there's a greater conservative majority on the bench after President Trump appointed three justices. The law's challengers, including 18 states led by Texas, are urging the court to rule that Obamacare's individual mandate, which requires nearly all Americans to get health insurance or pay a tax, is unconstitutional. The Trump administration has not revealed a replacement for the law if it's overturned. We have reached a very dangerous phase in in the pandemic. The case comes as several states report their highest number of daily coronavirus cases. Governors in California, New York and other states are now hinting at new restrictions. We have one last chance to stop a second wave. But some optimism this morning. Pfizer has announced his vaccine appears to be 90 percent effective. If approved, Pfizer expects to produce enough vaccines to cover about 25 million people around the world, with the first vaccines potentially available in mid-December. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. And time now is 436 and 69 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, first look at more grocery shortages as experts say shoppers are starting to stock up yet again. And also next, latest on another Houston police officer who has been killed in the line of duty. Back here outside with live cam. Justin's forecast coming up as we get our Tuesday moving right here on GMSA. Stick around. Making headlines this morning, a Houston police sergeant is dead after a shootout yesterday along a freeway in North Houston. Houston's police chief says investigators are still trying to figure out why 47 year old Sergeant Sean Rios engaged someone in a gun battle. Rios, a 25 year veteran of HPD, the shooting reported around 1:30 yesterday afternoon. Police say Rios was hit during an exchange of gunfire and ran to a nearby motel for help, but collapsed and died at the scene. Rios' death marks the fourth line of duty death for the Houston Police Department since December. The U.S. Attorney General sent a memo calling for investigations into election misconduct. As a result, a Justice Department official quit in protest. A.G. William Barr sent the memo to federal prosecutors, telling him that they should look into what he calls voting irregularity, ir irregularities. Sorry, that's even before states move to certify results in the coming weeks. Now, Richard Pilger reacted by resigning as the DOJ's top election crimes prosecutor. In an email, Pilger told colleagues that Barr's memo did away with a 40-year-old policy of not interfering in ballot fraud investigations before an election becomes certified. A morbid sign of spiking COVID-19 deaths right here in Texas can be seen over in El Paso. Morgues there are so full that the county will soon have 10 mobile morgues to handle the spike. Some bodies are even skipping morgues entirely, going straight to funeral homes. An El Paso County judge fears COVID-19 deaths could reach 20 per day within the next two weeks. That's why he's not planning to end a two-week shutdown that was set to expire tomorrow. State officials are fighting that shutdown, but until a court rules, the judge's order will be allowed to continue. In time now, it's 441 and 69 degrees for now. He is still ahead, even though the market is picking up because of possible COVID vaccine. Why financial experts say you should still be cautious when it comes to your 401k. Plus, what to expect from major grocers who are facing new shortages on popular supplies like paper towels and toilet paper. And welcome back. It's 444. As coronavirus cases soar around the country, some grocery stores are already putting limits on certain items. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First to Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for supply shortages at your local grocery store. Yeah, we absolutely are starting to see shortages again. With record numbers of COVID infections sweeping the country, experts say shoppers are starting to stock up again. 
fearing another round of shortages in stores in the coming months. America's supply chains are still recovering from the first wave of panic buying, and now you have the largest selling season of the entire year on top of that. Grocery chains Kroger and HEB announcing they're bringing back product limits to help prevent shortages. We think that there's going to be a lot of limits at retail level that will hopefully help mitigate that to earlier to allow uh, the lack of stockpiling that we saw before. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll give you the expert advice on which household staples are most in demand and what to expect at other grocery stores facing a shortage in supply. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. As you may know, stock markets soared big time after that positive news of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. But 12 on your side, Marilyn Morris tells us why the market still may face a bumpy road and what experts say you should do with your 401k. From the opening bell, stocks rocketed on news that Pfizer's vaccine looks to be highly effective. We can see that with this new Pfizer drug, that we can get out of this. Financial advisor Rudy Torres says for the travel industry, oil, shopping centers and more, word of a strong vaccine provides light at the end of a long dark tunnel. But that's months away. For now, Danelle it's Rucker sees like a Friday volatile market waiting for more been. answers. Uh, banks continue to spike. How is Joe Biden going to handle that? Uh, what is he going to do? The stimulus package, what's going to happen with that? that's going to affect the stock market. The markets like clarity and the election provided some. And now that we know that Joe Biden's in, we really know where the policies are going to be and what things he's going to support. As for any Biden tax hikes, analysts say the markets are banking that Congress will be split between parties. About a third of, of Americans have a 401k for the average investor. If there is such a thing, what should I be doing? All the experts have shown that you can't time the market. So periodic investing over the long term and then being patient with a well diversified portfolio, that's the way to go. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Oh, it's funny as everyone I know, we've agreed now since like March, just don't even look at your 401k. It's not worth the anxiety, right? Mm, exactly. <laughs> we'll just wait. Yeah. Let's see how things are looking on the roads with Marcus and we'll get an update on a little cool front coming our way with Justin. Well, right now is not a bad time to take a look at the roads. Uh, no accidents at this point. Now you will encounter if you're just about to head out the door, little mist here and there. So there could be some areas that are slick, particularly those long turns and curves. You want to slow down well ahead of those areas. 604 Bandera Road so far, no issues there. Moving on to some other areas like 10 Equilibrium here. The upper levels are moving fine for the east and the westbound lanes with no problems here. 21 at Nicoma. Thank you, Marcus. Looks hey, good. Yeah, a little cool front on the way, but you said no jacket required yet again, Justin. No, this uh, this cool front will bring us some drier air, but it's not going to cool us down. I mean, you look down the line, too, guys. This is going to be a warm next couple of weeks. It looks like no fall in sight, I'm sorry to say. I'm just the messenger, though. Don't shoot the messenger. Let's take a look at the uh, visibility right now. We have uh, some lower visibility as you get out towards Gonzales and down closer to the coast. Uh, that's where fog is kicking in this morning. We're not seeing much here around San Antonio, though. Things are uh, pretty quiet for now. now. Marcus mentioned there is some mist and drizzle out there. Certainly possible through the morning hours. And as we look at the bigger picture here, uh, fog's probably a little thicker as you get down towards Bevo and Victoria. That's where we have a dense fog advisory in effect. This is going to go until 8, 8 a.m., I should say, this morning and then includes most of the county south and east of San Antonio. There's a look outside, yet not a problem right now. 69 degrees, southerly winds at about 10 miles per hour. We do have those cloudy skies. Uh, upper 60s, close to 70. This is well above average. 69 Holota, 68 Pulverde, 64 Bernie State, 67 right now in comfort. And as we zoom out some, most places in the 60s, uh, if not 70s, 71 right now in New Braunfels. That is a warm number for mid-November. So there is our front. The dew points are much lower behind it. That's the one redeeming factor with this front is that it will draw in that drier air and take away some of this uh, sticky humidity that we have in place. We'll zoom out some. It's a very clear definition here where this front is. So out in West Texas, the air is extremely dry. That's what we have to look forward to once we get some northwesterly winds this afternoon. Uh, the dew point tracker shows that the uh, dew points will fall off sharply by this afternoon and then into tomorrow. We'll have a pretty dry day. They'll try to build back a little bit by Thursday and by the weekend. We're back into the humidity. Uh, we do think, though, that we'll get another front probably late on Sunday, and that should drop the dew points once again. Out in the Gulf of Mexico, we do have Tropical Storm Ada. 
this is expected to work up towards the Panhandle of Florida in the next few days. This storm's been out there forever. It's been all over the Caribbean. It's still uh, still spinning at this hour. And then what we have going on here across the middle part of the country, this nice so looking trough here, which would be nice if it would bring us some rain. But all the energy is up to the north. You see the snow and the rain up there around Omaha, Chicago. That's where most of that's going to stay. Can't rule out a shower as this passes by and brings a front through. But the chances uh, just aren't great. Uh, the heavier stuff, as we showed you up there around Omaha, and there is some wintry weather up across parts of Minnesota, too. So here's what our forecast looks like. By midday, front starts to come in. A couple of showers right along the front, if that. And once it moves in, clouds should clear out, and uh, we should see a pretty nice afternoon. Now, tomorrow morning, I'll caution you with the drier air. It is going to be chillier on uh, your Wednesday morning. We'll see uh, temperatures probably in the 50s in a lot of spots. So it'll be a little different than this morning. Forecast for today, uh, it's 66 at 7 o'clock. We'll go 74 noon time. Just a 10% chance of rain as the front works through. You notice it's not much of a cool down. Actually, it is not a cool down. 80 degrees uh, by 4 o'clock. And then uh, the extended forecast will go 80 tomorrow for Veterans Day, mostly sunny, 83 Thursday. Another slight chance for rain Friday into Saturday. Still not a great chance, though, and the temperatures generally stay pretty warm, guys. Well, go figure. Shorts and flip-flops for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the way it's looking right now, right? That's the way it's looking right now. It is subject to change. We've still course. got a little more time, but... Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not looking like fall at all. Okay, changing the subject real quick. I'm still baffled while it appears that the beards are coming in much hardier this year. <laughs> you know, 2020, yeah, all, all bets are off. You just, there's no way to. I mean, I know things anything. have been hairy this year, but geez. <laughs> the, the stress, there you I go. guess. I don't know, but wow. That geez. could be it. Yours too, that's amazing. Okay, yeah. thank you, Justin. Yep. Still, 451, <laughs> what was that? Still looking nice. You oh, guys thank are you. Yes. Thank you. Well, we have to keep them grouped. 451, 69 degrees. <laughs> and still ahead, we are getting ready for the annual Country Music Awards tomorrow on ABC. But we're going to tell you why some of the biggest stars will not be showing up. Real quick review of all your lottery numbers. Pick three, 336, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 0787, Fireball 6. Cash 5, 2, 5, 12, 28, 33. And Texas 2 Step, 815. 28, 32, bonus ball, 35. Get ready for some drama on tonight's new Bachelorette episode on ABC. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. A couple of names you won't see at the CMA Awards Wednesday night on ABC, Florida Georgia Line and Lee Bryce. FGL's Tyler Hubbard tested positive for COVID-19. He's quarantining in a tour bus in his driveway. Lee Bryce tested positive over the weekend, so both had to drop out of planned performances at the Country Music Awards show. Get ready for some drama on tonight's Bachelorette. I mean, it's a Bachelorette. Of course there's drama. <laughs> Tasha Adams steps in for Claire Crawley, who leaves the show after finding a fiance in the first three episodes. Now it's Adam's turn to find love. There's some amazing relationships that form, and I don't know, you might cry, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna, you're gonna have all the feels. Check out her journey starting tonight on ABC. Ariana Grande's position number one. Her new album, Positions, debuts atop the Billboard 200 album chart. It's her third number one in two years and two and a half months, and that's a record. Billboard says it's the fastest any woman has topped the chart with three original albums of new music, not counting soundtracks. And happy birthday to Tracy Morgan. The actor and comedian is 52 today, while Grey's Anatomy star Ellen Pompeo is 51. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And the season of giving is upon us, and one thing many people might take for granted is a good pair of shoes. That's why this month our Quesa community partners, the local nonprofit Zabatos, and the San Antonio Police Department are partnering up for the annual Share of the Shoes drive. If you'd like to make a donation, you can drop new pairs of shoes at any San Antonio Police Department substation now through November 30th, or you can make a monetary donation online. You can find all that information on quesacommunity.com. Right now, 456 6 69 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, first look at how President elect Joe Biden is starting the first week of his transition focused on the coronavirus pandemic. Plus, McDonald's may be getting into the meatless burger competition. We're going to tell you about the McPlant ahead in Tech Bites. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. President-elect Joe Biden plotting his own path to guide this nation out of a pandemic. Meanwhile, there's a big shakeup at the Department of Justice. I'm Alex Roche in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll have details coming up. Outside with live cam, look at all those clouds. Hard to see much of the uh, tops of the buildings downtown San Antonio. Uh, a cool front is on the way, but Justin says you're probably hardly going to notice it. <laughs> it's going to be a slight one. Good morning. It is Tuesday, November 10th. Thanks for joining us. Let's go straight to Justin on this November 10th with an update. So not much of an oomph to this one. No, not much at all. This is just going to be some drier air, which will feel nice, but uh, we're not getting the cold air and it's not going to be windy or anything like that. The winds may pick up a little bit, but not uh, not a lot. Uh, right now, we've got uh, temperatures uh, in the 60s. It's warm out there. It's going to be a warm, muggy start. We've got uh, dew points up there, too, so there's a little bit of drizzle and mist going on. As far as fog goes, uh, there is some of that out there, especially down to the south and east of San Antonio. We're seeing visibility down about a quarter of a mile down towards Victoria and Gonzales. Not a problem, though, here in San Antonio. There is a dense fog advisory for those areas. That's going to go till about 8 o'clock this morning. So uh, those counties south and east of San Antonio, that's where visibility could get down to a quarter of a mile for an extended amount of time. Uh, the day planner calls for a 10% chance rain around noontime. We'll get a wheat frontal battery through here, as we mentioned. That may scare up a shower, but it's not going to be much. And then behind it, the drier air starts to filter in. That'll take away some of the clouds. We'll be up around 84 high today. And then dip back down to the 60s, eventually 50s tonight with uh, with that drier air in place. A few changes for the weekend. We're going to talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Marcus now and take a look at your morning traffic situation. Well, thank you, Justin. And folks, as we take a look at the map, you can see everything looks pretty good, except for this one little section of Bandera Road. Uh, no doubt that's due to the uh, signal lights there uh, inbound or eastbound, if you will, on Bandera Road, headed towards 410 from 1604. So just be advised to uh, have a little bit of slow down with those traffic lights if you don't time it just right. I-10 and West Avenue so far, no issues there for the eastbound or the westbound lanes. And then 410 Austin Highway, not too many vehicles just yet. So we quite haven't we haven't quite hit that surge of traffic. And then 410 and Fredericksburg Road so far, all clear. Marcus Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. President Trump and his team are still claiming the election was stolen, providing no definitive evidence to back it up. Meanwhile, President-elect Joe Biden is already getting to work announcing his plans to tackle the coronavirus pandemic. ABC's Alex Perche is in Wilmington, Delaware, with the latest. As the U.S. passes 10 million COVID cases, President-elect Joe Biden is welcoming Pfizer's vaccine breakthrough, but warning there's still more work to be done. The challenge before us right now is still immense and growing. We're still facing a very dark winter. Mask wearing often politicized by the president, Biden is now trying to reset that conversation. I want to be very clear. The goal of mask wearing is not to make your life less comfortable. It's to give something back to all of us, a normal life. Monday, he was briefed by his new coronavirus task force. Biden planning to ramp up testing, contact tracing, get more PPE for health care workers, and assess the racial disparities with the virus. Today, Mask Biden's expected to talk about his plans for health care, as the Supreme Court hears another challenge to the Affordable Care Act this morning. Meanwhile, the White House had its own COVID briefing led by Vice President Mike Pence for the first time in nearly three weeks. President Trump, while active on Twitter, still largely out of sight since Biden's victory speech and still refusing to concede. This election is not over. Far from it. But President Trump and his team have presented no credible evidence of voter fraud. And overnight, the head of election crimes at the Department of Justice, Richard Pilger, resigning after Attorney General William Barr issued a new policy to U.S. attorneys, telling them to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities. Investigations of voter fraud would typically begin after state certify results, weeks after an election. And right now, the Trump-appointed administrator of the General Services Administration is not recognizing the results of this election. Until that happens, the agency is holding back transition resources for Joe Biden, something his lawyers are now threatening legal action over. Alex Perche, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. And here are the latest numbers in Bear County. Our seven-day rolling average is up to 234 now. The number of cases reported yesterday went well above that average with 417 new cases. No new deaths were reported. Right now, 294 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital. 
55 of those are from El Paso, where hospitals are being overwhelmed. 118 patients are in the ICU and 56 are on ventilators. Speaking of COVID-19, Uvalde County residents are split on the, how they feel about the county reinstating a mask order there. The decision follows an increase in COVID-19 cases. With a population of nearly 27,000 and only one hospital in county, officials are keeping a close eye on cases. The county health authority, Dr. Jared Reading, believes new testing capability are a reason they are seeing more cases. He says in the last two weeks they have seen 67 new ones. About 30 of those cases appeared in the last four days. He says many were spread from gatherings. Residents have mixed opinions about the new change. Absolutely hate it. I think it's a great idea. And this is a serious thing. Uvalde County has confirmed 900 cases of COVID since the outbreak. The virus has claimed the lives of 40 people there. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping you can help them track down a robbery suspect. Police say the man in these pictures went up to a clerk at a Shell gas station on South WW White Road and placed a beer on the counter. Investigators say that man then placed his hand in his pocket and demanded money from the cash register. The clerk believed the suspect was armed and gave up the money before the man ran off. If you can help, you can call Crime Stoppers at number on your screen 210-224-STOP. Just about six minutes past the hour, 69 degrees. Are you ready for the McPlant? We're gonna tell you about McDonald's plan for a meatless burger. You could be living with diabetes and not even know it. Just had some warning signs to watch out for. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little bit humid at 69 degrees. Uh, I know it wasn't my imagination. I know I felt like a slight breeze for like one second when I stepped out this morning, but that was nice while it lasted. We're going to check in with Justin to see when that very weak cold front will arrive. Five oh nine November Diabetes Awareness Month, and according to the American Diabetes Association, more than thirty four million Americans have diabetes. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with some important things you need to know. Good morning. Well, Mark and Stephanie, many people are not even aware that they have diabetes. So this morning we're sharing some symptoms you shouldn't ignore. It's often dubbed as the silent killer. Each year, more than 7 million Americans with diabetes go undiagnosed. Recognizing the early warning signs may save your life. Yeah. Frequent oh, urination okay. might mean your kidneys are trying to get rid of excess sugar in the blood. This can lead to extreme thirst. You may also have a dry mouth or itchy skin. Unexpected weight loss and increased hunger are potential symptoms. Yeast infections are common in both men and women with diabetes. Also feeling drowsy or nauseous, having fruity breath or noticing vision changes can be symptoms. Prompt treatment along with healthy habits can help you manage blood sugar levels. If we can preserve some of their own natural beta cell function, it just diminishes the impact of the disease on them. A recent study found patients who had better blood sugar control during their first year after they were diagnosed had a lower risk for future problems like kidney disease, stroke, heart failure, eye disease, and poor circulation. And there are two main types of diabetes. Type 1 is when your body doesn't make any insulin. Type 2 is when your body doesn't make enough insulin or doesn't use it effectively. And more recently, researchers described a third type called 3C. This kind happens when a healthy pancreas is damaged by problems such as a disease, trauma, or tumor. All these types should be taken seriously, and diet and exercise are important factors to keep you healthy. Mark and Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. Time now is 511 and 69 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, Apple getting ready to unveil a new line of MacBooks. We have a bit of a preview. Plus, McDonald's may be looking into making its own McPlant meatless burgers. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. 
Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Just about 5.15, Apple is set to announce a new line of MacBooks today. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, new products from Apple. During today's online event, Apple is expected to unveil its first MacBooks with the same processing chips used in the iPhone. Apple says the new Macs will be faster and use less power. Reports say Apple could also unveil over-ear headphones. Video game prices are going up for the first time in 15 years. The industry-wide effort is underway to hike the standard price of a game from $60 to $70. Game makers acknowledge it's an unpopular move amid an economic crisis is driven by the pandemic, but they say inflation left them no choice. And get ready for a burger with no meat at McDonald's. The McPlant is about to hit the menu. The patty will be supplied by meat substitute manufacturer Beyond Meat. The McPlant will appear early next year on a market-by-market -market basis as a test item. And those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That was Monica Sar Abdi reporting. Well, it's been one of the big questions in conversations about holding law enforcement agencies accountable. Should footage from officers' body cams be released after they shoot and kill someone? The debate is a topic of this week's episode of KSET Explains. Meyer Arthur has a preview. Across the country, in response to officers killing people they come into contact with, there have been growing demands for police reform. All street. All street. All some are calling for budget cuts, others for improved training. All demands aiming for the same result, more accountability. Over the past several years, law enforcement agencies have begun outfitting their officers with body-worn cameras in an effort to increase transparency and aid investigations. And ultimately, I think that's what shows our community, hey, we're transparent. There's accountability on all sides here. Watch for yourself. I think when officers realize that they're on camera all the time, they do have a tendency to be a little more mindful about what they do and what they say. But even when body camera footage is available, we've seen police departments resist releasing that footage after deadly confrontations, leaving loved ones and communities with more questions than answers. It was disbelief. I mean, like, how do we go from, I'm going to take your brother to get help, to, oh, there was an altercation and now your brother is deceased. Every day you turn on the TV, you send somebody else being killed by a police officer, by somebody who's supposed to be protecting us. Some argue there are valid reasons to withhold footage. In Texas, there are actually rules about what they can and cannot release. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we're taking a look at the transparency body-worn camera footage can provide, the possible shortcomings, and the way evolving digital technology has provided more evidence in encounters with law enforcement that turn violent. KSAT Explains, the body camera debate. And then KSET explains the body camera debate will be available to stream on demand this Thursday on the KSET TV app. So you can find that on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. Well, it's pretty mild out there right now. 69 degrees. Justin's forecast is coming up because we have a cool front on the way. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Officer Marcus Trujillo. The roads were OK earlier. And so far, things still look pretty good out there. So no issues out there on the highway. Taking a look at 37 and Jones Avenue, north and south on lane still running smoothly. No problems over at 10 at Fresno. Quiet, thank you. Yeah, it doesn't look like we've seen any moisture on the roads. We, we nope. need a little bit more precipitation than that, right, Justin? Yeah, it's just the light, drizzly stuff mm -hmm. this morning. If we even get some of that, it, it's going to be patchy around the area. Uh, there could be a couple showers later today, and that's uh, not going to be fruitful either, I'm afraid. Let's talk a little bit first, though, about the hurricane season. It's a record-breaking hurricane season. We had Ada make landfall in South Florida. Check this out. Uh, we have had 12... Uh, land falling storms this year. Pretty incredible. And that's the uh, most uh, named storms ever to make landfall here in the U.S. mainland. Uh, it's just an incredibly busy year. And of course, here in Texas, we had Hannah and Beta. Laura got fairly close. Of course, just made landfall just to the east of the uh, Texas border there. We're still not done yet, by the way. There still could be a little bit more activity before it's all said and done. Hurricane season officially ends at the end of the month. 
Checking in on Tropical Storm Ada. Still out there. This thing's been meandering around the Caribbean for what seems like a long time now. The latest forecast track takes us up towards the Panhandle of Florida, thankfully weakening this system quite a bit. Still could bring some heavy rain, though, to parts of Florida. No impact on our forecast. Outside right now, we've got cloudy skies, a little bit of drizzle, a little bit of fog, as we mentioned. 67 at Stenson, 69 Kelly, and checking in at 69 at Randolph as well. We've got a southerly breeze at this hour. 66 Comfort, 64 Lost Maple, 67 at Stenson. Zooming out some. There are actually 70s on the map. I mean, this is mid-November. You would expect much better than this, but <laughs> this is where we are. 71, New Braunfels, 67 in Gonzales. And uh, we mentioned some of the fog, Gonzales, Bevo, Victoria. That's sort of the corridor where if we're going to see any fog, that's where it will be. That's where there is also a dense fog advisory in effect until 8 a.m. this morning, basically south and east of San Antonio. Here's a look at the dew points. Very high, mid-60s for the most part. That is in the muggy territory. If you're tired of that, we've got some good news. This frontal boundary that we're going to see today is not necessarily going to cool us down, but it will dry us out. And you can see there is a very clear division between uh, the moist air and the drier air out west. This front will continue to progress off to the south and east. Should be here, I'd say, by about midday. And that's uh, when we'll see some of that uh, drier air finally make it into uh, south Texas. Water vapor shows the we've got some drier air out west. And as you zoom out some, you can see our big upper level low, which is spinning across parts of Colorado and Nebraska. If this were a little bit further south, we'd be encouraged about rain, but it is taking all the energy with it off to the north, and that's where most of the rain and active weather is this morning. You'll find some snow across parts of Nebraska, just west of Omaha, and then stretching up towards Minneapolis and uh, just to the west of Chicago. Uh, yes, we could see a shower or two as this front comes through, but it'll be uh, very light, and most of us uh, probably going to stay dry. That front's through by this evening. We get the drier air moving in here. By tomorrow morning, it will be a little bit chilly. We'll start off in the 50s, but we'll warm right back up into the 80s tomorrow afternoon. So this is sort of a short-lived cool down. A forecast for today, uh, we should be up around 80. We'll put in that 10% chance of some showers around noontime. Winds will be initially out of the south and they'll switch around to the north anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Winds could get a little gusty at times, but shouldn't be a big deal. Extended forecast, we're going to go 80 tomorrow, 83 Thursday, mostly sunny. We will see some more cloud cover on Friday, some morning drizzle, 10% chance of a shower, and maybe a 20% chance on Saturday. Another front comes through Sunday. This one should be a little bit stronger. Still not a lot of rain with this one, and it does uh, cool us down some Monday into the 70s. Uh, not a big cool down, but it's at least a little stronger than this <laughs> last one. We're trying to trying to find a strong front here. It's just not happening. Well, at least you got a couple mm. of blue lines with the barbs on your maps anyway. Yeah, there's that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the uh, the Canadian cold air has just been uh, shut off. It's not coming down to Texas, at least anytime soon. So Canada is closed right now. Yeah, th that's the way it feels. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> baby steps, baby yeah. steps. 522, 69 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, the schedule for movies coming to theaters in 2022 heating up. Plus another big moment for Ariana Grande. Big three numbers are 336 Fireball 9. Daily four numbers 0787 Fireball 6. Ash 5, 2, 5, 12, 28, 33. And Texas 2 Step 8, 15, 28. 32 bonus ball 35. I-25, get ready for another Fantastic Beast movie, plus another billboard record for Ariana Grande. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Are you going somewhere? No, we're going somewhere. The film schedule for July of 2022 is heating up. Warner Brothers has slated the third Fantastic Beasts movie for July 15th of that year. And Universal says it'll release Get Out and Us filmmaker Jordan Peele's next horror movie the following weekend, July 22nd, 2022. Ariana Grande is in a familiar position. Her new album, Positions, has debuted at the top of the Billboard 200. It's her third number one album in under two years and three months. Billboard says no female artist has ever topped the chart with three studio albums in so short a time. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream water. Avet Brothers pay tribute to the American people with their new cover of the Woody Guthrie classic, This Land is Your Land. 
The video was filmed at the band's North Carolina home studio and across the United States. The band calls it an endeavor in the like-minded spirit of unity and love. In Hollywood, USA, I'm David Daniel. 527, 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, although it appears major progress is being made in developing a COVID-19 vaccine, why some of the top health officials are saying Americans still need to stay vigilant. Plus, it's never too early to start your holiday shopping. Why researchers say people are planning to spend more on gifts this year. Hello, good morning. It's Tuesday, November 10th. Got to say happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps on this November 10th. Yes, happy birthday. I always like to say I'm so glad they're on our side. Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> some tough hombres, that's for yes, sure. Definitely. Let's, uh, go to Justin, get the weather headlines for this morning. Uh, yeah, guys, uh, we're starting off with some fog, some drizzle out there to start. The, the roads may be a little damp in spots. We haven't seen a whole lot of it, but it's certainly possible. It's definitely warmer than average if you've been outside. We're still up close to 70. It's humid, too. Here's the good news. We'll get a weak cold front probably about lunchtime. That'll bring with it a shower for lucky. But the, the main takeaway here is some clearing skies and drier air, too. You'll notice the much drier air this afternoon and as we go into tonight and tomorrow, too. So it'll allow for some cooler temperatures on uh, your Wednesday. Temperatures right now, though, in the upper 60s, close to 70. 71 Cashville, 64 Burning State, 71 still in New Braunfels. Cloudy skies there, 66 in Comfort. And we are still seeing a little bit of patchy fog south and east of town. Gonzales, Beville, Victoria, those are the spots where fog is most likely. But uh, Marcus and I will keep an eye on the Transguide cameras and let you know if we're seeing anything here. 10% chance for shower around noontime. And then we'll see those temperatures still make it up to 80. This, this cold front again is not going to close down, just drives us out. And we may have another cold front down the line that brings another slight chance of rain. We'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. Let's go over to Marcus now and check in on that morning commute. Well, thank you, Justin. Folks, as we take a look at the roadways, it's still looking great out there. Now, we're off to not really a bumpy start, but we did have mist earlier this morning, just in certain parts of the highways. But as a result, though, no accidents. That's what's great. 37 and South Cross, you can see north and southbound lanes running smoothly. And the east and westbound lanes of I-10 there at Fresno, no problems. And Harry Wurzbach and 410 so far looking pretty good. Stephanie, Mark. Thank you, Marcus. In your morning headlines, President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris say they're moving the COVID-19 pandemic response in a new direction. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes just after more than 10 million cases are confirmed in the U.S. The United States has yet to turn the corner on COVID-19, but... Help is on the way with a vaccine. It's more than 90% effective, which is extraordinary and will play a major role in what the outcome of this is going to be. Pfizer says that rate is based on early research done on more than 43,000 study participants and could change. I think that uh, likely based on impact, that will be the greatest medical advance in the last 100 years, if you think about it, right? The drug maker says it hopes to be able to seek emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration before the end of the month. It is uh, uh, extraordinary that it's coming at a time that the world needs it the most. There have been more than 10 million known cases in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University. And despite the progress toward an effective vaccine, medical experts say people still need to be vigilant. There is a long road between actually getting the vaccine approved and getting it distributed to hundreds of millions of Americans. And so we really have to keep up our guard in the meantime. Another sign of advancement, the FDA approves Eli Lilly's coronavirus treatment for emergency use. This after research found the antibody appears to treat mild and moderate infections. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Meanwhile, some stocks have been soaring on hopes of a stimulus deal following the election of Joe Biden. Pfizer's coronavirus vaccine announcement also giving stocks a big boost. But tech companies that benefit from work from home economy like Zoom are struggling now. It showed in the Nasdaq, which dropped more than 100 points. Still, the Dow will try to keep its momentum going after gaining more than 800 points on Monday. A California couple has been charged with human trafficking for locking a man in a liquor store where he worked 15-hour shifts, 
seven days a week. The Santa Clara County District Attorney's Office says the couple is accused of threatening the victim with deportation if he told police. Officials believe the two engaged in predatory recruitment of workers from India. The DA's office reporting that the man slept in a storage room there, bathed in a mop bucket, and was never paid. An investigation estimates that couple stole more than $150,000 in wages from the victim and three other employees. If you need a job, General Motors is looking to fill a lot of tech positions. GM says they plan to hire 3,000 new employees from now through early next year. Those jobs will focus on engineering, design, and information technology. The automaker is working on developing autonomous and electric vehicles along with advanced platforms like smart battery systems. They also need workers with software expertise. And time now is 535 and 69 degrees for now. Still ahead, McDonald's stepping up the fast food game again with a brand new chicken sandwich. We'll tell you when you might be able to get your hands on it. Also next, why Americans are expected to spend even more money this holiday season, even in the middle of a pandemic. And outside with live cam, another cool front on the way. There's actually a couple on Justin's seven day forecast, but they don't pack quite the punch to the ones we've saw earlier this fall season. We'll be right back. Five thirty-eight. Well, Steph, as you know, it's never too early to start your holiday shopping, whether it's online or in the store. I'm not ready, though. You're not ready? No. Oh, not, get ready. I'm not ready. I know. So, according to a new survey, nearly half of Americans have already started, not me, after being stuck at home during the pandemic. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio to tell us more. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, happy shopper. Good morning. <laughs> I haven't started either. Well, whether you've started your holiday shopping yet or not, there's still time. But according to one survey on studyfinds.org, some people started checking things off their shopping list in August. Budgets are tight this year, but that doesn't seem to get in the way of some holiday shoppers. Researchers say 75% of people plan on spending more on presents since travel plans and trips had to be canceled. The survey showed 48% say they plan on doing their holiday shopping on online to avoid the craziness in the stores. When asked about what items they're interested in buying, about a quarter are buying more electronics, while nearly 30% say they are buying more clothes and accessories. The survey showed the majority of people are buying are likely to buy an item on sale instead of waiting for deals on Black Friday or Cyber Monday. Researchers say nearly half worry about spending too much on holiday shopping, but the majority are planning to have their holiday spending paid off by Christmas morning. Well, lucky them. 45 days till Christmas. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you see the, the snow? On I the saw the snow. I don't even have to shake it like a snow globe. It just keeps <laughs> snowing year round. 45 days. Whew. Wow. So Mark's keeping track. Yes, I am. Have you started your holiday shopping? No. No. Okay. Well, it's 45 <laughs> okay, days, Mark. Us. No, I was just <laughs> checking on you guys. Oh, it's a okay. different sort of accountability. No, uh -huh. of course, it's, time, it's almost time to start getting things rolling. We still have some time. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. Right now, it is 540, 69 degrees. And still ahead, how some airlines are trying to bring back food and alcohol on their flights sooner than you might think. In your morning consumer headlines, United Airlines is slowly bringing back food and alcohol. USA Today says United will start selling food, beer and wine on November 17th. But that's a test run that will involve only select flights from United's hub in Denver. United and other airlines have scaled back their in-flight food and drink service during the pandemic to avoid contact. United says it will use a touchless digital payment system for selling food and drinks. McDonald's trying a new approach to lure more customers in. The burger chain introducing new packaging, a new loyalty program, and is working to improve drive through and delivery services. McDonald's is also rolling out improvements like toasty buns, an enhanced grilling approach for hamburgers, along with some new menu items. Already, McDonald's has seen success with its spicy chicken nuggets, which launched in September. McDonald's said it will soon be launching a new crispy chicken sandwich early next year. Speaking of crispy, the donut shop has announced its limited edition caramel glaze collection and includes the original glazed donut covered in caramel glaze. And then there's the salted double caramel crunch, which is a caramel glazed donut dipped in caramel icing and sprinkled with a salted crunch topping. Now both are available at participating Krispy Kreme 
from now until November 22nd. Krispy Kreme, got it, okay. I was like, I'm not familiar with the donut shop. Okay, Krispy yeah, Kreme, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> a futuristic high-speed vehicle being tested in Las Vegas is being viewed as a success. That's according to company executives hoping to market it one day to consumers. ABC's Mandy Gaither tells us more about the Virgin Hyperloop in today's Consumer Watch. It could be the future of high-speed travel if proven safe and successful. Two Virgin Hyperloop executives took the first ride in the vehicle on a test track Sunday. The first passenger test has now been done of the first new mode of transportation, mass transportation that we've had in 100 years. The still unproven transportation system is a vehicle in a vacuum tube that uses magnetic levitation to reach high speeds. The technology that's been around since the 1970s lifts a train car above a track as magnets push the train upward and forward. The company's CEO says it could potentially slash travel time. I'll give you an example. Columbus, Ohio to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, if you stood, took any single person in Columbus and said how far away is Pittsburgh, everybody would say three hours. With Hyperloop, that's less than 25 minutes. The company says their Hyperloop pod only reached 100 miles per hour on the track rather than the 600 miles per hour that Hyperloop advocates have long promised. But executives say its test track is 500 meters long, limiting how fast the pods can now go. The company says Hyperloop pods can travel at the speed of aircraft, but with a fraction of the energy consumption. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. About quarter till. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And that's one thing we don't need on the roadways this mm. morning or any morning. <laughs> Something moving that fast. So <laughs> right now, accident free on the highways. Let's take a look at TransGuy once again. The upper and lower levels of uh, Culeota there, no problems. And then northbound, southbound lanes of 21 over by Nacoma, closer to the airport, all the way down to 21 and Hildebrand. So far, looking pretty good. Just remember, put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups. <laughs> No Shave November continues, and Justin Horn is hot on my tail in fundraising now. <laughs> yes, second place so far. 80, $185 on No Shave November, and the whiskers really are looking good, guys. Yeah. Huh? Thank you. You as well, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if yeah. you're looking for a link, go to ksat.com. I've also put one on uh, KSAT Mark Austin to the team link, and then you can pick individual team members to make donations, large or small. We'll take them all, all month long. That's right. You can donate to all the members if you want to. But our entire team right now <laughs> is on the verge of uh, raising $1,000 so right. far for Congrats. this year's No Shave November. Congrats. And like also, it. thank you to the viewers who have donated so far. Absolutely. Yes. Every single bit helps. Yes, thank you very much. We, we love that. And yeah, we'll keep it going through the end of November. Hey, check this out. Beautiful shot coming out of Las Maples. Jenny sent this in out of Hondo, visited Las Maples there. Uh, by the way, most of the weekends are booked up. I got to tell you that. I just looked at their website. The, the color change is happening. Mm -hmm. This is this is sort of the time, but the, the weekends are all booked up. You got to get a reservation to go out there. I think there are still some weekdays possibly, uh, but check ahead. Uh, but the, those are the views you're getting out of Wash Maples. It is nice this time of year. Right now, 69 degrees, humidity is at 90%. Southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. It's humid, it's warm, it's somewhat drizzly in a few spots. So heads up there. 66 Comfort, 66 Bandera, 67 Rio Medina, 68 Randolph. And we're still, still at 71 degrees there in New Braunfels. Uh, 70 also Carrizo Springs in the warm spot this morning. Katua checking in at 73. There is some visibility issues, some fog developing around Gonzales. That's where we continue to see about a quarter mile visibility. That's the same story in Victoria. So it's this little area right here, southeast of San Antonio. And that's also where we have a dense fog advisory. That's going to go until 8 o'clock this morning. And that's where we probably will find some issues with fog. Don't know that we'll see much here around San Antonio. Dew points are awful high, though. In the mid-60s right now, it's definitely sticky. If you're tired of that, you're ready for some drier air, we've got some good news for you. Uh, frontal boundary right now is uh, stretching across parts of West Texas and North Central Texas. And this frontal boundary will shift through, I'd say, by about midday. What you can expect with it, winds will pick up a little bit. It's not going to be cooler, but it will be drier. We'll get that drier air, those lower dew points you see out in West Texas. That'll funnel into our area. Here's the big picture. We've got Tropical Storm Ada down there in the Gulf of Mexico. We don't have to worry about this, at least here in Texas. Folks in the Panhandle of Florida may, as this is expected to work north. 
and uh, towards uh, Florida. There is a big trough of low pressure uh, that is moving across the middle part of the country, and that is what's dragging our front through. But all the energy is up here across the northern tier states, and that's where there's snow, rain, wintry weather going on there. Uh, this is going to continue to move east, so there will be some unsettled weather for the uh, Midwest. Here in Texas, just a shower or two. And I literally mean a shower or two because uh, here on the forecast map, it just shows you know, maybe a couple blips on the radar as this front works its way through midday. And then by the afternoon, clouds have cleared out because that drier air is here. And then we'll see some mostly clear skies tomorrow too. Temperatures will be right back up near 80 degrees. We're kind of stuck there, it feels like. Uh, so here's what our forecast looks like today. 10% chance of rain around noontime as that front works its way through and then up to 80. Winds will start out southerly and then switch around to the north. And then by 9 o'clock, we're looking at clear skies, temperatures in the 60s. And by tomorrow morning, we're talking 50s. So we'll drop down to 52 to start. 80 on your Veterans Day, 83 Thursday. There's another slight chance for rain Friday and Saturday. Another little system moves through. This one's a little bit further south. So that's why we've upped the rain chances to a whopping 20% on a Saturday. And then it clears out some on Sunday. We'll get a frontal battery, too, that will cool us down. So well, none of that is turtleneck weather. It's not. <laughs> I'm not. I know you're waiting, man. I know you got them all ready to go, uh, but it's going to be a lot wait longer. a little longer. I don't even think I own a single turtleneck. No. I don't believe you. But really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. You know who we need to ask? Who's that? Michael Mike. Parker Osterhage. Yeah, I bet Mike. he does. I yeah. He, I think he's waiting to use a lot of his winter gear. <laughs> and they're not even mock turtlenecks. They're the full the on. Full. Yes. Thick. <laughs> I was born in Michigan. <laughs> the real <laughs> deal. I believe it. Aww. Thank you, Justin. Right yep. now, 550, 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, Malin Ackerman and Alec Baldwin star in a new action comedy about a fight club, fight club exclusively for women. We're going to have a preview just ahead. Uh, lottery numbers now. Pick three, 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 six, Fireball nine, daily four, zero, seven, eight, seven, Fireball six. You can cash five numbers, two, five, twelve, twenty-eight, thirty-three, and Texas two step, eight, fifteen, twenty-eight, thirty-two, with a bonus ball of thirty-five. You're watching GMSA. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, breaking points in the fight against coronavirus. Cases in the U.S. now surging past 10 million, and there are new concerns about a possible super spreader Thanksgiving as college students prepare to go home for the holidays. Now we also have that new hope with the Pfizer vaccine. We've got new details and the challenges ahead with top expert Dr. Jha joining us live. You'll see it right here on GMA. Hitting me? Malin Ackerman steps in the octagon in Chick Fight. This is a shelter, a safe haven for women to come without societal judgment. Prepping for the role of women taking part in a fight club was easy for Ackerman and co-star Bella Thorne. I do box regularly. That's sort of one of my modes of exercise. I love getting all my all of my aggressiveness out on the bag. <laughs> um, but so it's sort of, it's been, it's been part of my uh, regimen for a few years, to be honest with you. You know, it really didn't take much. Like Malin also said, I as well like boxing. Like I just do it with my trainer when he comes over to work me out. I haven't done it in a long time because I haven't been working out in a long time. But when I do, I get kind of obsessive and like, you know, I just want to know how to fight. I want you to train me. Train you to do what, ride a bike? I'm part of a fight club. That sounds dangerous. I am sick and tired of my demons getting the better of me and I want to punch them square in the face. Oh, 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 oh. I hope there's a few takeaways from it. I mean, what we have is this woman who is down on her luck and she ends up in this underground fight club. But what we realize is that this club was in fact started by a therapist, but this therapist decided that it was a good place to let women get out their rage, becoming confident, self-confidence, sisterhood, you know, supporting one another um, and being there for one another in hard times. I'm not afraid of you, Cobra Kai, and I am not going to back down from anyone, and especially not you. Staying out of the octagon in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella.
A reminder, the season of giving is upon us, and one of the many things people might take for granted is a good pair of shoes. It's why this month, our KSAC community partner, the local nonprofit Zapatos, and the San Antonio Police Department are partnering for the annual Share the Shoes Drive. If you'd like to make a donation, could drop off new shoes at any SAPD substation now through November 30th, or you can make a monetary donation online. All this information is at ksaccommunity.com. Listen up, Selena fans, UTSA teaming up with Netflix to host a virtual panel about the upcoming Netflix series, which looks at the life of the Tejano superstar. It's all taking place at 1130 this morning. We have a link on KSAT.com where you can register for today's virtual event. You can also read all about the class at UTSA that covers Selena's life. It is all online at KSAT.com. Well, lost jobs, lost wages, the cost of COVID continues to add up. Just ahead on GMSA, we'll take a look at why you need to look out for so-called COVID cons that promise help, but could lead, leave you worse off than before. And Marcus is here keeping an eye on the roads. There's I-10 at Crossroads, that Justin's forecast. Still to come as we approach the top of the hour on this Tuesday, November 10th. Police are still looking for a suspect who fired a gun on Loop 410 overnight. As pandemic continues to intensify around the country, the Supreme Court will hear arguments on an important case this morning. We'll see what is at stake for the Affordable Care Act. And taking a look outside with live cam, 69 degrees, a little humid, but we are awaiting a, a cold front, a weak one, but it's still a cold front. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Tuesday, November 10th. And we want to start off by wishing a happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps. To all you current and former Marines watching now, we salute you. And of course, Veterans Day is tomorrow. We talk much more about that coming up as we get into Wednesday. Yes, a happy birthday. But for now, we're, you know, still patiently waiting for that cold front. There is a front yeah. on the way, but uh, Justin says you might say, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, maybe cold front's not even the right word for it. It's uh, just some drier air that will be coming in because it's not really going to cool us down, guys. It, it may bring a shower with it, but the chances of rain are really pretty low today. Pollen count, uh, this is from yesterday, is uh, low, mold's been low. We've had a really good stretch here of pollen count, so we'll see if we keep it going today. Uh, but it is pretty humid out there right now. The temperatures, as a result, have been kept up overnight. We're close to 70 here in San Antonio, so definitely not jacket weather this morning. It's warm, it's humid, 71 Castroville, 66 Comfort, 64 right now in Las Maples. And there is a little bit of fog out there, especially as you get south and east of San Antonio, so you'll find some visibility issues. Gonzalez actually close to zero there, so that is uh, problematic. And then Bevo and Victoria, Seen the fog as well. There's a dense fog advisory in effect for those areas until 8 a.m. this morning. Our forecast today calls for about a 10% chance of rain around noontime as that weak frontal boundary comes through. Um, but again, we don't cool down much. Temperatures will still make it up to around 80. Look for skies to clear. We'll see a chillier morning tomorrow with the lows in the 50s. And we haven't seen a whole lot of issues on the roadways. There is a little bit of drizzle out there in some spots. But I think it's been pretty quiet so far, Marcus. Uh, how are things looking at this hour? It has been very, very quiet. Now, we do have an accident, but it's a minor accident. Officers in the process of moving it off the roadway. And for that, we're going to move over to the east side, just south of I-10, uh, 410 interchange, southbound main lanes of 410 right there, Houston Street, that exit. Officers have moved that accident there. So just be advised, could be a little slick there through the interchange, but we're really not seeing any signs there through Transguide. 35 in Ritterman, north and southbound lanes, Still running smoothly with no delays in anyone's travel times. No problems here. 37 at Jones. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police investigating a shooting that happened overnight on the west side. We're told a man was driving on Frio City Road around 10 p.m. Police say that's when someone in another car fired a shot at the driver. The bullet ricocheted around the inside of the car and hit the driver, grazing his shoulder. Victim ended up at the Country Inn Motel on Southwest Loop 410 before police were called. Police are still searching for the shooter. Local health officials are reporting 417 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County and no new virus related deaths. In yesterday's daily briefing, Mayor Ron Nierberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf said the seven day moving average is now at 234 cases per day. 
Mary Nuremberg also says the positivity rate in San Antonio is now at 8.4 percent. Meanwhile, local health officials will release a new report later this week on COVID-19 statistics in our area. And Judge Wolf, who returned after self-isolation and two negative COVID-19 tests, says San Antonio hospitals are currently treating 55 corona patients from El Paso. Meanwhile, in El Paso, the spike in COVID-19 deaths is leading the county to bring in 10 mobile morgues. El Paso County officials say morgues are filled beyond capacity and bodies are piling up faster than morticians can investigate their deaths. Some bodies even skipping morgues entirely, going straight to funeral homes. An El Paso County judge fears COVID deaths could reach 20 per day within the next two weeks. That's why he's planning not to end a two-week shutdown that was set to expire tomorrow. Nationwide, the FDA has approved a new coronavirus treatment for emergency use. It's an antibody that's supposed to treat mild to moderate viral infections in adults and children. The FDA authorized it after a study found it could ease symptoms and lower the risk of hospitalization to some patients. Experts hope it can kickstart an immune response against infection. The government has already made a deal with the company and they plan to have 100,000 vials ready to ship within days. With a surge of COVID cases hitting our nation, the CDC is updating its holiday guidelines. The CDC says small family gatherings are helping to spread the virus as COVID fatigue sets in. Guidelines also say older adults and those at heightened risk of illness should not gather with people outside their households. Metro Health echoing the new guidelines warning everyone in Bear County against traditional holiday gatherings and to wear a mask if we see others. Brazil's National Health Agency has suspended a phase three trial of a coronavirus vaccine. The agency says there was a serious adverse event in one of the volunteers. The health agency said that it will evaluate the data observed so far to judge on the risk and benefit of continuing that study. 605 right now, it's been one of the big questions in conversations about holding law enforcement agencies accountable. Should footage from officers' body-worn cameras be released after they shoot and kill someone? The debate is a topic of this week's episode of Case It Explains. Myra Arthur has a preview. Across the country, in response to officers killing people they come into contact with, there have been growing demands for police reform. Some are calling for budget cuts, others for improved training. All demands aiming for the same result, more accountability. Over the past several years, law enforcement agencies have begun outfitting their officers with body-worn cameras in an effort to increase transparency and aid investigations. And ultimately, I think that's what shows our community, hey, we're transparent. There's accountability on all sides here. Watch for yourself. I think when officers realize that they're on camera all the time, they do have a tendency to be a little more mindful about what they do and what they say. But even when body camera footage is available, we've seen police departments resist releasing that footage after deadly confrontations, leaving loved ones and communities with more questions than answers. It was disbelief. I mean, like, how do we go from, I'm going to take your brother to get help, to, oh, there was an altercation and now your brother is deceased. Every day you turn on the TV, you send somebody else being killed by a police officer, by somebody who's supposed to be protecting us. Some argue there are valid reasons to withhold footage. In Texas, there are actually rules about what they can and cannot release. In this episode of Case That Explains, we're taking a look at the transparency body-worn camera footage can provide, the possible shortcomings, and the way evolving digital technology has provided more evidence in encounters with law enforcement that turn violent. Case That Explains, the body camera debate. And Case It Explains, the body camera debate will be available to stream on demand this Thursday on the Case It TV app. You can find it on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. The 87th Texas legislature won't gavel in until January, but state lawmakers on Monday got their first chance to file legislation for what's expected to be a particularly tough 140-day stretch at the state capitol early next year. Our Sarah Costa is live in the studio with a preview of some of those bills that were filed. Good morning.
Good morning and more than 500 bills have already been filed in the state house and senate ranging on issues from legalizing marijuana, police reform and expanding Medicaid. San Antonio Senator elect Roland Gutierrez pre filed a bill on Monday that would legalize cannabis for medical and recreational use in Texas if passed. Gutierrez said legalization would result in an estimated $3.2 billion in state revenue and 30,000 high paying jobs boosting employment in agriculture manufacture, retail, and distributing. A representative out of Houston filed a bill known as the George Floyd Act, and it would make a number of policing and criminal justice reforms. And San Antonio State Representative Diego Bernal would expand Medicaid eligibility to certain people under the Federal Patent Protection and Affordable Care Act in his pre-file legislation. Texas is currently in the minority of states that has declined to expand Medicaid coverage to people with incomes near or below the poverty line. And thousands of bills are expected to be filed throughout this legislative session, though only a fraction of them will make it through both chambers and end up on Governor Greg Abbott. Abbott's desk. The Texas Tribune did a great job highlighting some of these bills. You can read their full story right now on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. The future of the Affordable Care Act is at stake today as the U.S. Supreme Court takes up a case affecting millions of Americans' health care. And it all comes in the midst of a public health crisis as cases continue to rise during the pandemic. ABC's Kenneth Moten has more. This morning, Obamacare is hanging in the balance as coronavirus cases surge across the country. The Supreme Court today will hear arguments on the Affordable Care Act from the Trump administration, asking the justices to invalidate the entire law. It's done me a lot of good, and, and honestly, I wouldn't have known where to turn um, or where to sign up for insurance. 21 million Americans will lose health insurance nationwide if the law is struck down. And protections for 54 million people with pre-existing conditions could also be eliminated. Veronica Valdez, a mother of five, is watching the case closely after enrolling in Obamacare when she lost her job. Having kids also, I mean, you can't take the risk of not having insurance. The court upheld the Affordable Care Act in two previous cases, but now there's a greater conservative majority on the bench after President Trump appointed three justices. The law's challengers, including 18 states led by Texas, are urging the court to rule that Obamacare's individual mandate, which requires nearly all Americans to get health insurance or pay a tax, is unconstitutional. The Trump administration has not revealed a replacement for the law if it's overturned. We have reached a very dangerous phase in, in the pandemic. The case comes as several states report their highest number of daily coronavirus cases. Governors in California, New York, and other states are now hinting at new restrictions. We have one last chance to stop a second wave. But some optimism this morning. Pfizer has announced his vaccine appears to be 90% effective. If approved, Pfizer expects to produce enough vaccines to cover about 25 million people around the world, with the first vaccines potentially available in mid-December. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 611, 69 degrees. McDonald's is the latest fast food chain to jump on the meatless bandwagon. We're going to learn more about the company's McPlant burger. And that's what we think they're going to call it, mm -hmm. the McPlant burger. Yeah, appropriate. Many, <laughs> yeah, many people with diabetes uh, don't even know they have it after the break. We'll learn how to recognize certain symptoms so you can get the treatment that you need. And taking a look outside with live cam, 69 degrees for now. We are expecting a little tiny cold front, not a big deal, but uh, we're going to check in with Justin because even though we're going to get a tiny cold front today, we might have another one later. We'll be right back. 615 November is Diabetes Awareness Month. According to the American Diabetes Association, more than 34 million Americans have diabetes. Our Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with some important things you need to know. Good morning, Sarah. Hello again, Sarah. Good morning. And it is, you know, National Diabetes Awareness Month. Uh, but you have to make sure that there it's not just one or two types of diabetes. So you may not even know you're having some of these symptoms and some of them you shouldn't ignore. It's often dubbed as the silent killer. Each year, more than 7 million Americans with diabetes go undiagnosed. Recognizing the early warning signs may save your life. Yeah. Frequent oh, urination yeah. might mean your kidneys are trying to get rid of excess sugar in the blood. This can lead to extreme thirst. You may also have a dry mouth or itchy skin. Unexpected weight loss and increased hunger are potential symptoms. 
Yeast infections are common in both men and women with diabetes, also feeling drowsy or nauseous. Having fruity breath or noticing vision changes can be symptoms. Prompt treatment, along with healthy habits, can help you manage blood sugar levels. If we can preserve some of their own natural beta cell function, it just diminishes the impact of the disease on them. A recent study found patients who had better blood sugar control during their first year after they were diagnosed had a lower risk for future problems like kidney disease, stroke, heart failure, eye disease, and poor circulation. And there are two main types of diabetes. Type 1 is when your body doesn't make any insulin. Type 2 is when your body doesn't make enough insulin or doesn't use it effectively. And more recently, researchers described a third type called type 3C. This kind happens when a healthy pancreas is damaged by problems such as a disease, trauma, or tumor. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Let's go ahead and check the roads with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And right now, things still look pretty good out there, despite that one accident, that one accident uh, being over on the east side. So the rest of the highways, you can see no issues. Move over to I-10, 410 area over on the east side. Right there, Houston on those southbound lanes. That's where we have that accident in the clearing stage. It's just about wrapped up. No problems there. 410 at Harry Ward's Rock. You can see slight increases in the traffic, but really not too bad. Then I-10 at Crossroads, eastbound and westbound lanes also start to pick up in volume. Thank you, Marcus. Boy, we haven't completely given up on rainfall chances around here, but we are desperately in need. We need it in the worst way. It has been so dry and there is an outside chance today, but it's just not a, a, a good chance. And it's certainly going to help us with our drought situation. We've been keeping tallies on this sort of thing. It has been since September 21st, 49 days ago that we got a tenth of an inch of rain or more. There were a couple of days here in October where we got some very light rain, but it didn't amount to much. We got about 5800 back on September 21st, and that was basically our last significant rainfall. As we look across the state, there is a front there, but it's not going to really help us scare up much rain today. You see the numbers are a little cooler behind the front. 35 in Amarillo, 42 Lubbock, 48 in Midland. And really, their numbers are colder because the air is drier. We have lower dew points out there, and that's what we have to look forward to. These uh, lower dew points, drier air will shift in a little bit later today. They'll clear out the skies. It'll make it feel a little bit better. Temperatures, though, still probably up around 80 for high today. Dew points right now in the mid 60s. It's sticky outside. That's leading to some drizzle and some fog as well. And as we look outside, you can kind of see the low level clouds there hanging around. We haven't had a whole lot of fog here, but uh, there have been a few reports of some light mist and drizzle. 69 degrees at the airport, 69 at Kelly, 68 Randolph. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 15. Around the area, still in the 70s in New Braunfels, that continues to be one of the warm spots, along with Katua, which is still at 73. Man, it's mid-November. These numbers are just way too warm. Uh, I wish I could tell you that it would change a little bit, but it's just not going to. Other than tomorrow morning, we will see some slightly lower temperatures thanks to that uh, drier air. Visibility, down close to zero in Gonzales, Beeville, Victoria. Those are the two spots where fog has been a little bit of an issue this morning. There is a dense fog advisory down there until 8 a.m. Here's the big picture, uh, snow. Uh, falling across parts of Nebraska this morning, Omaha seeing a little bit of wintry weather and then rain stretches up towards Wisconsin all the way back down into Oklahoma. Notice it just kind of ends right there at the Texas border. And that's because we just don't have the energy down here. Yes, that front is there, but there's just not enough lift to really get any sort of significant rainfall going here. It does paint a couple of showers right along the front, maybe around noontime, and then uh, we should start to clear out by the afternoon and evening hours. And tomorrow will be pretty nice. Uh, the air will be drier will still be up in the, to the low 80s, though the uh, daytime high doesn't change much. Let's talk a little bit about Tropical Storm Ada. It's still out there. This storm has zigzagged across the Caribbean and made landfall in Florida. Now it's moved back down to the south and west. Winds at 60 miles per hour right now, gusting to 65. The latest forecast track, and this has changed a little bit, takes it up towards parts of Florida, potentially Mississippi, uh, Alabama, all the way back out towards uh, Louisiana. That's even in play now, although it would be a much weaker storm. This doesn't look like it's going to pose a big threat to the U.S. mainland, but it will bring some rain. Already has brought quite a bit of rain to parts of Florida. Uh, so uh, headlines today, as we mentioned, uh, we'll see that weak frontal boundary, 10% chance of some rain up around 80 for a high, 52 tomorrow morning, and then close to 80 tomorrow, 83 on Thursday. Some morning drizzle Friday. There could be a shower or two. Friday into Saturday, we get some good moisture return before another front moves through on Sunday, and that uh, cools us down a little bit again. Uh, it's just been pretty amazing to me that in, in November, we typically get some good fronts, 
bring some good rain with it. And it's just not happening. Kind of evaporated, didn't it? Pretty much. Uh, we're going through a pretty dry, warm stretch, and it doesn't look like it's going to end anytime soon. Well, plus the tropics were gangbusters there for weeks and weeks, and things just kind of... Yeah, pretty much. And we're nearing the end of hurricane season. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll be patient for now. Thanks, yep. Justin. 621, 69 degrees. And grocery stores are starting to put some purchase limits on certain items again as coronavirus cases continue to soar around the country. We're going to find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. When Panera's Chef Klaus makes a pizza, he doesn't just make a pizza. He uses fresh, clean ingredients to make a masterpiece. Taste our delicious new flatbread pizzas today. Panera. Introducing Volterran Arthritis Pain Gel, the first full prescription strength non-steroidal anti-inflammatory gel available over the counter. Volterran is powerful arthritis pain relief in a gel. Volterran, the joy of movement. It's the last days of Macy's Veterans Day sale with our lowest prices of the season on furniture and mattresses like this leather sofa for $8.99 and a new bed just $7.89. Plus, get a free adjustable base with qualifying mattress purchase. Now at Macy's. Ready to take your immune support to the next level? Nature's Balmy is here for you. The number one herbal supplement brand has everything you need to help keep your immune system strong. Immune support comes naturally with Nature's Bounty. In this morning's GMA First Look, bracing for supply shortages at your local grocery store. And we absolutely are starting to see shortages again. With record numbers of COVID infections sweeping the country, experts say shoppers are starting to stock up again, fearing another round of shortages in stores in the coming months. America's supply chains are still recovering from the first wave of panic buying, and now you have the largest selling season of the entire year on top of that. Grocery chains Kroger and HEB announcing they're bringing back product limits to help prevent shortages. We think that there's going to be a lot of limits at retail level that will hopefully help mitigate that to earlier to allow uh, the lack of stockpiling that we saw before. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll give you the expert advice on which household staples are most in demand and what to expect at other grocery stores facing a shortage in supply. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Apple expected to unveil its first MacBook computer with the same processing chip as an iPhone. It's expected to happen during an online event today. Apple says that will help the new computers be faster and use less power. Reports also say Apple may announce its own over-the-year headphones as well. And if you're a fan of video games, prepare to spend more money. Video game prices are going up for the first time in 15 years. An industry-wide effort is underway to hike the standard price of a game from 60 to $70. Game makers acknowledge it's an unpopular move amid an economic crisis driven by the pandemic, but they say inflation left them no choice. Move aside, Big Mac. Get ready for a burger with no meat at McDonald's. The McPlant is about to hit the menu. No kidding. The patty will be supplied by meat sub manufacturer Beyond Meat. McDonald's started testing the burger in Canada last year. If all goes well, the company says it could eventually branch out to plant-based chicken and breakfast sandwiches. Hmm, would you try it? Yep. You would? Mm hmm Okay. I just want to, with a straight face, go to the drive-thru and say, I'll have the big plants. <laughs> Please, with a fries and a Coke. Extra fr large fries, extra yes. large Coke. Yes, yeah. and, a, and an ice cream on the to side. To offset the healthiness of the yes. McPlant. Sure. Of course. Why not? <laughs> Time now, 627, 69 degrees. President-elect Joe Biden moving along with plans to fight the pandemic, but the current presidential administration is apparently not cooperating. We have details on the uh, transition of power. And many people desperate for relief during the pandemic, but that desperation can make us easy targets for scammers. We'll tell you how to avoid COVID cons in our next half hour. And Trans Guide, as we approach the bottom of the hour, starting your day at 281 in Hildebrand, we are seeing some brake lights there on the uh, access road approaching up towards Hildebrand itself. 35 at Ritterman, traffic is flowing, and there's 37 at Jones Avenue. We'll be right back. President-elect Joe Biden plotting his own path to guide this nation out of a pandemic. Meanwhile, there's a big shakeup at the Department of Justice. I'm Alex Roche in Wilmington, Delaware. I'll have details coming up.
Outside with live cam, plenty of low clouds. We'll see if there's any fog out there as well. And there's a cool front due in our area today, but Justin says it is anything but cold. Hi, it's Tuesday, November 10th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a nice day yesterday on Monday. And we hope you rested well last night. Let's get our Tuesday rolling. Justin's in for Mike with the latest. And uh, when is this coolish front going to be here, Justin? We think lunchtime. So you'll see a little bit of a wind shift. The drier air will move in. But no, it's not going to be all that much cooler. So humid, warmer than average this morning. By midday, a weak cold front arrives. There could be a shower or two with that. And then clearing and some drier air this afternoon. We still make it up close to 80 for a high. It will be cooler though tomorrow morning. That'll be the one kind of difference that I think you'll notice. We can see the the front on radar on radar right now. Very clearly it's starting to move through Sonora. It's uh, making its way towards uh, Del Rio and then it'll continue to work its way through the rest of the area ushering in that drier West Texas air 64 degrees right now. Bernie State 69 Canyon Lake still at 71 New Braunfels 68 Randolph. There is a little bit of patchy fog, maybe some patchy drizzle out there. Visibility down to about a quarter of a mile in Gonzales. It's been bouncing around from close to zero up to about a quarter of a mile there. So be extra careful if you're uh, south and east of San Antonio. That's where the fog is right now. Uh, noontime 10% chance rain this front comes through will be up around 80 today clearing out this afternoon and we'll see those northerly winds kick in 10 to 15 miles per hour. Looks like it's been pretty quiet on the roadways this morning, but let's check with the expert Marcus. What are you seeing? Right now, things look pretty good. Now, we did have a, just a minor accident there, 410 down there East Houston over on the east side, but right now, things are looking great. No delays in anyone's travel times. Let's take another look at a couple of Transguide cameras. 21 uh, Hildebrand there, you can see folks moving there around the curve with no issues, no delays. There's more than enough room and no congestion here. 35 at Ritterman in the north or the southbound lanes. Moving on to 37 at Jones, things look even better. So just remember, buckle up once you hit out today. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police had a busy night responding to five shootings since 5 p.m. yesterday, and there were a few more over the past few hours. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the newsroom with more information. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and officers have been so busy, we simply do not have the information yet on some of these shootings, but let's go over the ones we do know about. The most recent shooting happened around 10 o'clock last night in the city's west side. SAPD says a man was driving in the area of Frio City Road when someone in another vehicle started shooting at him. Police say the bullet ricocheted around the inside of the car and grazed the driver's shoulder. He pulled over at a motel near Southwest Loop 410. He was not seriously injured, though, and police are still looking for the shooter this morning. Next, San Antonio police are looking into two scenes involving a shooting on the southwest side. Officers say around 9 o'clock last night, a 17-year-old boy was found shot and taken to the hospital. This is in the 7200 block of Horizon Star, but police believe he was shot somewhere else. Officers say the teen was playing basketball at a court nearby when he was shot in the leg. Someone then took that teen to the second location. Police are now looking for a dark four door sedan that may be involved in this shooting case. Finally, another shooting just north of downtown turned deadly last night. This happened in nor on North Main Avenue, just behind Lulu's Bakery, before 7 p.m. Police say a man in his 20s was found dead with a gunshot to his head and shell casings found around the body. Officers say they have not been able to locate a gun, but are looking at surveillance video to try to learn more. It's unclear if the man was staying at the motel nearby or if he was homeless. We are working on gathering information on all these shootings that happened overnight. And when we get an update, we will update you on KSAT 12 and post those updates also on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Scary moments for a driver of an 18 wheel last night after nearly driving off the road. Take a look at this video with us here. Please say the driver of this 18 wheeler took a turnaround above 410 at Fredericksburg too quickly, caused the trailer to go out over the highway. Please, the back wheels hit the bridge, caused some damage. TxDOT was called out and they say the damage was cosmetic. There's no damage to the structural integrity of that bridge. And President Donald Trump and his team still claiming the election was stolen without providing any credible evidence to back the claim up. Uh, President-elect Joe Biden already at work announcing plans to tackle the COVID-19 pandemics. ABC's Alex Perche has more. As the U.S. passes 10 million COVID cases, President-elect Joe Biden is welcoming Pfizer's vaccine breakthrough, but warning there's still more work to be done. The challenge before us right now is still immense and growing. We're still facing a very dark winter. 
Mask wearing, often politicized by the president, Biden is now trying to reset that conversation. I want to be very clear. The goal of mask wearing is not to make your life less comfortable. It's to give something back to all of us, a normal life. Monday, he was briefed by his new coronavirus task force. Biden planning to ramp up testing, contact tracing, get more PPE for health care workers, and assess the racial disparities with the virus. Today, Mask Biden's expected to talk about his plans for health care, as the Supreme Court hears another challenge to the Affordable Care Act this morning. Meanwhile, the White House had its own COVID briefing led by Vice President Mike Pence for the first time in nearly three weeks. President Trump, while active on Twitter, still largely out of sight since Biden's victory speech and still refusing to concede. This election is not over. Far from it. But President Trump and his team have presented no credible evidence of voter fraud. And overnight, the head of election crimes at the Department of Justice, Richard Pilger, resigning after Attorney General William Barr issued a new policy to U.S. attorneys, telling them to pursue substantial allegations of voting and vote tabulation irregularities. Investigations of voter fraud would typically begin after state certified results, weeks after an election. And right now, the Trump appointed administrator of the General Services Administration is not recognizing the results of this election. Until that happens, the agency is holding back transition resources for Joe Biden, something his lawyers are now threatening legal action over. Alex Perche, ABC News, Wilmington, Delaware. In other headlines this morning, a coronavirus stimulus package remains very much in limbo. Negotiations are at a standstill and the prospects of one succeeding remain uncertain in the wake of the election. Both parties have been unable to agree on a price tag for the stimulus bill. On a related note, Congress is facing a December 11th deadline to keep the government funded. The U.S. National Hurricane Center in Miami says subtropical storm Theta has formed in the Northeast Atlantic Ocean. It is the 29th named storm in the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, which is the most all time. Now it breaks the record set in 2005, which was the same year as Hurricane Katrina. At this moment, the center says Theta poses no threat to land. General Motors looking to fill a lot of tech positions. They say they plan to hire 3,000 new employees from now through early next year. The jobs will focus on engineering, design, and information technology and according to Detroit Free Press some of those jobs will be remote so you don't need to live in Detroit where the company is headquartered. The automaker working on developing autonomous and electric vehicles along with advanced platforms like smart battery systems. An historic feat happened in the world capital of rock climbing. And Emily Harrington became the first woman to climb El Capitan in Yosemite Park using the Golden Gate route while free climbing. That means the only rope she used was for safety purposes, not to lift her up. Now, Harrington climbed the 3,000 foot granite wall in just over 21 hours. To put that in perspective, that is nearly five tower of the America five towers of the America stacked on top of each other. Wow. OK, impressive. Im very impressive. National parks saluting our nation's veterans and Gold Star families with free access to many of our landmarks. The Department of the Interior says entrance fees for national parks will be permanently way for veterans and Gold Star families starting today. The department already weighs fees for active duty military service members. The move comes just one day before Veterans Day here in the US. Well, of course, it's November 10th. That means the season of giving is upon us. And one thing many people might take for granted is a good pair of shoes. That's why this month, our KSAC community partners, the local nonprofit Zapatos and the San Antonio Police Department are partnering up for the annual Share of the Shoes Drive. And if you'd like to make a donation, you can drop off new pairs of shoes at any SAPD substation now through November 30th, or you can make a monetary donation online. You can find all this information on ksetcommunity.com. Time check right now, 640, 69 degrees. And lost jobs, lost wages, the cost of COVID-19 adding up for many. After the break, we're going to take a look at why you need to be careful about COVID cons promising help that could leave you worse off than before. 643 as the pandemic continues, millions of people around the nation are still in need of help. But the virus isn't the only danger that we have to deal with. Max Massey shows the details on how to make sure you are not the next victim of a COVID con. Have you gotten any of these in your inbox? How about free offers for COVID relief? My bank and stuff will talk about COVID relief funds and applications for that. I've gotten a couple scam ones. The Federal Trade Commission has received more than 79,000 reports of fraud related to COVID-19. 
They've resulted in $97 million in fraud loss. These scams typically come as a message from friends or contacts offering you a stimulus check and asking for you to click a link. These links might also ask you to fill out a survey or give information, but at the end, there's no money, and the scammers have had plenty of time to fish for your information. Also, beware of fake COVID contact tracers. Real contact tracers will call by phone, not connect by email. The real deal will never ask for money. Contact tracing is run by the Department of Health and not independent companies. Many apps still have problems and can send your location and data to third parties. Always be cautious of anything you put on your phone and never give your information to someone you're not 100% comfortable with. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 645. And things were pretty quiet on the roads mm -hmm. for the most part earlier. Let's go ahead and check back with Officer Marcus Trujillo. And Stephanie, things still look pretty good out there. There's a 37 in Jones, no increase in the traffic on the north or the southbound lanes. Moving over to 35 at 90. You see a few more vehicles on those northbound main lanes at 35 headed into the downtown area. And then right now, 410 at Harry Wurzbach. Little haze there off to the side there, but that just could be a smudge on the lens with no problems there. I-10 at Crossroads. Well, the roaring 2020s continue here at KSAT. <laughs> <laughs> no Shave November is rolling on and there's not a razor in sight right now. Our team is doing very well. Raised about $1,000 so far. For more, go to link to donate on our team at uh, ksat.com. Proceeds go to No Shave November, benefiting a number of uh, cancer organizations, fighting cancer, helping people with cancer, etc., etc. And thank you for all to all the people who have donated so far. And Mark being a little modest, he's in the lead right now in our team. So congrats. And just in a close yeah. uh, second place. Well, second not, place, yeah. Not so close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, you no, are you've done second. really well, Mark. Yeah, I'm going to start making donations to you guys. Aww. Instead of yourself. <laughs> what? Myself? Instead of yourself. See, if you look at my donation list, you're going to think anonymous, that I'm donating anonymous, myself. Anonymous, there's, anonymous. there's some, a couple of cats have donated on there. <laughs> I didn't do it. Has Truman no. donated? No, he has not. not yet. I need to have a good talk with him about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. He is a lazy Labrador and he needs oh, to get yeah. his checkbook. <laughs> oh, Mark. Bring How the funny. money. That's right. Uh, Show me the money. Show me the money. Hey, but good. thanks to everybody, by the way. Yes. Uh, once again, uh, and you can go to our website. We've got all the information there. Uh, take a look at this picture on our KSAC Connect. Uh, this is from Chris. This was out at Medina Lake. Beautiful shot. It was beautiful yesterday. It really was. But one thing that kind of jumps out to me here is how low the lake is. And, you know, we've seen this before, uh, but we're going through a pretty dry stretch here. And Medina is one of the places that uh, is certainly seeing the effects of that. We would like to say we get some rain today with a, with a frontal boundary, but the rain chances and the prospects of seeing any rain today are pretty low. You can kind of pick out where our front is because it is cooler out across West Texas. Temp temperatures in the 40s there. And really uh, the reason that you're seeing the colder numbers out west is because the air is drier. And that's going to be one of the main effects with this front. Uh, you can see dew points in the 20s out across West Texas. We're going to see that drier air spread into our neck of the woods later today. So we'll get rid of some of this humidity. And it's sticky out there this morning. It really is. Uh, dew points are in the mid-60s. Uh, actually, dew points are in the 60s just uh, about everywhere you go. And that's leading to some fog and some drizzle as well for spots. We can very clearly point out the uh, frontal boundary. We can see it on radar. It's right there moving through Sonora. Should make it to Junction here soon. Rock Springs, couple more hours. And then we think again, San Antonio sometime around lunch uh, and you'll start to see these clouds clear out and those dew points will start to fall off. Pretty hazy scene though as we look towards downtown. 69 degrees at the airport, 68 Kelly, 68 Randolph and we're still carrying a south to southeasterly breeze. Uh, around the area, 71 Castroville, 69 in Hondo. Low 70s to upper 60s for the most part with uh, one cool spot there around Rack Springs down to 63 this morning. There's a look at the fog visibility a quarter of a mile for our southeastern counties starting to see visibility drop off a little bit in Pleasanton too so we could see some fog there over the next hour. Dense fog advisory in effect until 8 a.m. for our southeastern counties. Here's the big picture snow flowing across Nebraska some pretty good rain stretching from Iowa up to parts of Wisconsin. That's where all the energy is It's just too far north to really give us any good chances for rain. So the future cast shows just a couple showers as this front near San Antonio and by this afternoon we're looking at clearing skies and a breezy wind out of the north anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow should be a nice day with uh, those lower dew points in place. Very quickly we got to talk about the tropics. We've got Ada of course which still spinning there. It's going to move up towards the panhandle of Florida and then uh, we have Theta which is newly formed out in the Atlantic. This is a subtropical storm certainly not going to have any effect on the U.S. mainland and then there's another area that we're watching that uh, could potentially develop. So 
Tropics starting to heat up again. Here we go. We've already set the record now for most storms, named storms in a season. Forecast for today, temperatures up around 80 degrees. There's that 10% chance of rain as the front comes through. And the extended forecast will go 80 tomorrow, 83 Thursday. Another slight chance of some rain Friday and Saturday. Still not a great chance, but a 20% shot on Saturday. Love that one background you have of San Fernando Cathedral. It's, it's, it's just, pretty. It's yeah, pretty. It, it's so picturesque. It is. San Antonio is a beautiful place. It is. We're yep. lucky. Yep. Thanks, Justin. 649, 69 degrees. And many of us may be tired of the endless demand of keeping up on social media, but cutting the cord on social media is a big step to take. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to take a look at what happens when you log off for good. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up. We'll check back in with uh, Marcus Trujillo as well. We get an update on your time saver traffic. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber live in Southeast Bear County at what appears to be the scene of a crash involving a pedestrian. Uh, we here are here on Mathis Road, just east of I-37. Uh, the Sheriff's Office has this area blocked off and there is a car in the middle. Now, uh, other than that, I don't have any information. The deputies here are not releasing anything to us just yet, but we did see an ambulance go racing by as we were heading this way. So we can assume that someone was in the back of that. But again, uh, what we heard initially is that this was a crash involving a pedestrian who had been hit, awaiting confirmation uh, from the sheriff's office, but no information here from these deputies just now. Reporting live in Southeast Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, breaking point in the fight against coronavirus. Cases in the U.S. now surging past 10 million, and there are new concerns about a possible super spreader Thanksgiving as college students prepare to go home for the holidays. Now we also have that new hope with the Pfizer vaccine. We've got new details and the challenges ahead with top expert Dr. Ja joining us live. You'll see it right here on GMA. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, thousands of clinical trials are underway across the country to study vaccine candidates and treatments for COVID-19. But some bad actors are working to take advantage of clinical volunteers to make a quick buck. In this week's Money It's Personal, Ivan Herrera has some advice to help you find a legitimate clinical trial and avoid the scammers. That's today at 9 after Good Morning America. We are fast approaching five minutes till seven, and that means it's time for another look at Time Saver Traffic with Marcus. And traffic starting to pick up uh, 35 uh, up on the north side by Judson. Vance Jackson, I-10, so far not too bad. And look, more than enough room there. 10 and West Avenue almost looks like a holiday here. Not too much in the way of traffic. 410 at Austin Highway started to pick up in volume. And so we move on to some other areas like 410 at Fredericksburg Road. See a stalled vehicle all, well off to the shoulder. So not delaying the eastbound or the westbound lanes with no problem. 1604 Bandera. Justin. Thank you, Marcus, and uh, I don't think we've seen any uh, drops or anything like that on the traffic cameras there, so it looks like we're doing pretty good as far as drizzle goes. There could be a little bit of, of that out there. We've also seen some fog, especially south and east of town, so we'll have some uh, uh, dense fog advisories going to go until 8 a.m. there. 80 degrees, your high temperature, just a 10% chance rain as a weak frontal battery moves through midday. Then we'll be up around 80 tomorrow, 83 Thursday. Another very slight chance rain as we get into Friday and Saturday. 20% chance as it stands right now on Saturday. Still nothing significant as far as rainfall goes in the seven day forecast, which is unfortunate because and, we do need the rain. And we do need the rain. And don't forget, if you'd like to contribute to No Shave November, go to ksat.com, search for No Shave. There are a couple of links there to include taking us, uh, taking you to our team page where you can make individual donations. That's right, and you have time all month long. All month long. So don't long. forget. <laughs> yep. Marcus, Justin, thank you, gentlemen. And thank you guys for joining us today. We'll see you back here at nine.